Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, once again, let us all, I mean, uh, submit us with the mighty hand of God this morning. So, we are going to listen to the word of God. Amen. So, we are going to listen to the word of God that the word which is written in the Bible is, has the power and has the, has the presence of God because this is the word of God. So, let us all submit us with the mighty hand of God and pray for, uh, together for a while and uh, pray for the blessing of the word today. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this wonderful day of uh, Resurrection Sunday. Father, we thank you for bringing all of us together in the presence of God to worship your Lord. Father, we thank you that uh, you have been good to us and good to everyone. Lord, we thank you that you, ha you have been faithful for every one of us, oh God. We thank you for all the blessings that we received, oh Lord. This morning, once again, we are committing ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Speak to us, oh God. I mean, help us to understand the meaning of the biblical truth, which is, I mean, mentioned in the Bible of God. Father God, we are committing ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Speak to us, oh God. We thank you for hearing a prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this morning, I would like to uh, speak about, I mean, facing and overcoming the life changes, the challenges through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So as uh, the people of God are um, celebrating the Easter or the Resurrection Sunday uh, of Jesus Christ, I mean, I would like to speak something about the facing and overcoming the challenges of the life through the power of the Resurrection. We understand that, you know, uh, many of the people, uh, we all are going through different different uh, I mean, situations and different problems and dis different troubles in our lives. At the same time, I mean, the Bible very clearly says that how can we overcome, how can we, chal I, mean, I, mean, I mean, face the challenges that we are having in our Christian life. Now, many of the people, we are, when we are going through the troubles and when we are going through a difficult situation, the people are not understanding, they are not knowing how to face those challenges and how to overcome the temptations and how to overcome the problems of the life. But this morning, as we are celebrating this resurrection Sunday of Jesus Christ, and we understand that through the power and through the presence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will be able to face all kinds of challenges in our lives. Amen. So that's a, that's the reason that I have, I mean, uh, uh, selected this uh, uh, message for uh, this Resurrection Sunday. So for as an introduction, let me tell you one thing. That uh, first of all, let me remind you one thing: the Resurrection Sunday is not all about the Easter bunnies or Easter eggs or egg hunting or something like that, which is celebrated on the Easter day. But we are celebrating not the Easter, but we are celebrating the risen of Jesus Christ or the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because we understand that when we, when we think about the Easter, we understand the Easter is the, I mean, the word which is derived from the Easter. She was a goddess of pagan religion. So Easter was a goddess of I mean, pagan religion and that goddess was the goddess of spring and fertility of that religion, okay, of, of that pagan religion or that, I mean, ancient pagan religion. So that Easter, always the people are celebrating that Easter with all the Easter bunnies and the symbol of fertility and the Easter egg and painted with uh, uh, bright colors to represent the sunlight of spring and all those things that the people are celebrating the Easter. I mean, so, but we understand we are not celebrating the ancient pagan religious ritual of the Easter and that means we are not celebrating the birthday of uh, Easter I mean, goddess but we are celebrating the risen Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason I told you that we have the power and we have the presence I mean in our lives also and that we can experience in our life I mean through the presence of the I mean, I mean resurrected Jesus Christ. I mean we know in, in, in Christendom itself we understand Understand, there are two types of Christians in uh, in Christianity itself. Okay, there are two types of Christians in Christianity. The first, I mean, first group is the professing Christians. 
Prophecy Christian means for namesake they are serving God and they does not know what are the Christian fundamental doctrines of the Bible and they doesn't know I mean I mean they are not led by the Holy Spirit and they are giving more importance for the tradition and ritual or the or the religious activities I mean so there is a, there is a group of people group, group of people means uh, a group of Christians and uh, this group of people are always giving importance for the rituals of the religion activities of the religion and uh, some other things and traditions and everything but there is another group of people among the christendom that is the true born again christian people those who are experiencing the real and the true resurrection power of jesus christ in their life this is uh, this is what i want to i mean uh, 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 tell you more emphasizely that you know we have to understand we are the people those who have experienced the presence of god in our life men we are the people of resurrection we are the people those who have the true experience of born again right we have the true experience of the born again experience so that's the reason that we are worshiping god in truth and spirit men the other people the traditional people the religious people they are always worshiping i mean their own god and goddesses i mean without the power of the holy spirit without understanding what are the i mean the, the fundamental doctrines of the bible especially the new testament but the be other people the born again christians are always worshiping god in truth and spirit because we understand we are the born again people we are the real christians and we have the true experience of the bible experience of the holy spirit and experience the doctrines of the bible hallelujah so we are i mean celebrating the real resurrection of jesus christ in a in a in a, in a spiritual way in a spiritual manner men so at the same time let me start with the word which paul is emphasizing in philippians chapter 3 verse 10 let's read that verse once men uh, philippians chapter 3 verse 10 yeah i want to know christ uh, yes. to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, participation in his suffering becoming like him in his death okay so here apostle paul is emphasizing about a particular word that is the power of his resurrection the power of the resurrection of jesus christ men so we will think about that and later we will go through the i mean some of the other portions of the bible like uh, maybe matthew gospel of matthew or uh, uh, the the book of acts or something you know we, when we study about the resurrection of jesus christ there are different people and different concept about the resurrection of jesus christ and there are many different false theories about the resurrection of jesus christ you know the false theories and all those people are trying to make sure that that jesus christ resurrection is not at happen okay so they are always against the resurrection of jesus christ and they says that jesus is not resurrected you know they made up all the stories and they made up all the theories and they are saying you know we are standing against the resurrection of jesus christ i mean they believe that jesus is not resurrected you know there are different uh, kinds of uh, uh, false theories about uh, the resurrection of jesus christ and uh, let me uh, there are many things but uh, let me uh, bring you maybe maybe uh, i mean uh, three or four i mean uh, uh, theories which is uh, i mean uh, talking about uh, i mean standing against the the resurrection of jesus christ just for your understanding the first theory which i would like to share with you is the swoon theory so there is a swoon theory okay s w o o n swoon theory you know uh, swoon in malayalam means uh, what is that mayangi poga le faint ay faint ay nanu mayangi poga bodham kettu pogunnan okke parayunnana the swoon theory this is that jesus did not really die you know jesus did not really died and he just fainted on the cross and all thought he was dead and put him in the tomb and he was survived after three days and somehow he rolled away the heavy stone and he came out okay he came out and he appeared to the disciples and convinced them that he got a glorified body and he went into a solitary place and died himself 
This is the sworn theory. You know, when these people are making this theory to stand against the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they say that Jesus is not really resurrected. I mean, he was just fainted on the cross and he was just buried inside the tomb. After the three days, somehow he came out and he just I mean, removed the, the, the stone which was I mean, kept in, I mean, at the entrance of the tomb and he went to a solitary place. Then he died there and he says that, they say that, okay, it is not that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not happened. And the second theory uh, that uh, I mean, brings is the, the wrong tomb theory. The wrong tomb theory means, you know, the everyone, the disciples and the soldiers and the women and the angels all went to the wrong tomb. Tetaya matarudeo uru savakalarude adate kana e shishan marium dodan marium amen marium womanum okapoya nana or parayana. That means you know, that theory is known as the wrong tomb theory. The wrong tomb theory means, they say that all the disciples went to the, I mean some of the disciples went to the tomb and, and, and women went to the tomb and some other people also went to the tomb and angel was there, I mean in front of the tomb and that was the wrong tomb. It was not the tomb of Jesus Christ. So that is the wrong tomb theory. And the third theory is the theft theory. The theft theory means the disciples stole the body and claimed that he rose from the dead. The disciples stole the body of Jesus Christ and kept somewhere and it is not that he rose, he, he did not rose from the, from the, from the dead. But the disciples went in the night there and they took the body of Jesus Christ and kept somewhere else. And again, one more, I mean, theory I will bring it to you, that the impersonation theory, okay, impersonation means albaratum. Okay, impersonation theory means, I mean, it was someone else appeared to disciples instead of Jesus Christ. That means, after the resurrection, Jesus was appearing to many people, many disciples and many other people. I mean, the, the, the disciples, those who were I mean, walking uh, through the, the, the Emmaus or somewhere, somewhere, you know. So, Jesus was appearing to the people, different people. And this, I mean, theory says that when Jesus, it was not Jesus that who resurrected. It was not Jesus that died. Or it was not Jesus that appeared to the people. But it was someone else instead of Jesus. I mean, but why I am sharing all these theories to you? The reason is, we the people of God, we the believers, the Christians, the true believers are not believing in those theories, the man-made theories, because we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected. Amen? So there are many reasons that we can prove that Jesus is resurrected. So this morning, as we are celebrating the Resurrection Sunday, we should know one thing that our Lord Jesus is, I mean, is resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. I mean, there are many people standing against the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and they are talking against the I mean, resurrection of Jesus Christ and they say that it was not really Jesus. And Jesus was not really died. And Jesus is not resurrected. And they are always making those concepts and those I mean, ideas about the, uh, uh, sorry, against the, the, the Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we believe, I mean, the, the, the children of God, the people of God this morning, we believe that our Lord Jesus is, I mean, resurrected in a real manner. When, when you go to the Gospels, we understand how can we defend and how the Gospel writers and how apostles of uh, Jesus Christ and disciples of Jesus Christ were trying to defend the false theories. And how they were trying to defend the false theories. And they are trying to prove that the fact of resurrection is a reality. The resurrection of Jesus is a reality. There are many things that, I mean, the gospel writers and the apostles are, I mean, mentioning in the Bible that Jesus is really resurrected. You know, Jesus is really resurrected. The first point is, I mean, Alvin, the first one is, it's a historical fact. I mean, so we, we the Christians are thinking about how can we say that Jesus is resurrected? I mean, I told you that there are many people, there are many theories that who is standing 
against the resurrection of Jesus Christ and they have their own ideas and they have their own teachings and everything but at the same time the people of God the children of God the true believers are always standing on the promises of God and that promise says that Jesus will come soon okay and we understand if you go to the I mean I mean to go to Jerusalem you can see something there that the tomb is still open there is nobody and you will understand it's a historical fact let us read maybe Luke chapter 24 verse 3 Luke chapter 24 verse 3 the piece the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty when so this shows that the history shows that the tomb of Jesus is empty even today you know, there are many people going for the pilgrimage or uh, there are many uh, people going for the tour to Jerusalem. You know, those people are saying that there is, there is a picture also there. I mean, you can see there the, the tomb is open and it's empty. Nothing is there inside. I mean, so that's the reason we can say that. The, historically, we can prove that Jesus is risen when Jesus is not there. So this is the historical fact according to Luke chapter 24 verse 3. And again, secondly, this fact is proved by the eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. There are many people, those who are eyewitnessing, and they are saying that Jesus is resurrected. There are many reasons we can say that Jesus is resurrected. You know, how can, I mean, they say that in John chapter 20, verses 1 to 10, we understand Mary Magdalene and Peter and John all could see, I mean, see that the body of Jesus Christ, it was not the Jesus Christ, but only the cloth or the garments or the wrappings of Jesus Christ when he was buried in the tomb. I mean, so... We are not reading all those portions. But in John chapter 20 verses 1 to 10, we understand that these all people went to the tomb of Jesus Christ to see the body of Jesus Christ. But they could not see the body of Jesus Christ inside the tomb, but they were watching only the garments are there, only the clothes are there, only the wrappings are there. So that shows that, you know, we are the people, those who are believing in, I mean, blindly in the Bible, right? We believe in the Bible Blindly, you know, we, we don't have any question about, I mean, all those things, okay, okay, how it is happening, how it is, okay, the questions are good, I mean, critical thinking is good, but at the same time, some of the things that which is written in the Bible is true, and we believe that as we are the Christians and we have to believe that it is true, when so when, I mean, historically it is proved, we have to believe that, and also from the Bible we believe that Jesus is resurrected. I mean, so we can see here that it is proved by the eyewitness of uh, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 20, it's very clearly says that I mean, Mary Magdalene and Peter, John and all those people went to the tomb of Jesus Christ and they could not see the body of Jesus Christ inside the tomb, but they were seeing only the cloth or the garments or the wrappings of Jesus Christ. Again, if you go to Acts chapter 26, I mean, Apostle Paul is one of the, I mean, I mean, greatest, I mean, what is that, uh, I mean, a, a example for the eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. You know, when we think about that uh, chapter 26, the whole chapter is speaking about Paul is, exp I mean, explaining his encounter with uh, the resurrected Jesus Christ. So, Apostle Paul was explaining that he got an encounter with Jesus Christ. So, that Jesus Christ was resurrected and Jesus is resurrected and he was encountering and, and, and having that encounter with Jesus Christ and after that and he was a I man fallen down and he got that uh, special experience of uh, the resurrected Jesus Christ and after that he became a missionary and I mean going to different places and preaching the gospel and spreading the gospel. I mean, so let us understand that the eyewitnesses are always sharing with us that when Jesus is resurrected jesus is resurrected so that is the second thing that we can i mean prove and also there are many people to whom jesus appeared after the resurrection so when we read that portion we will understand there are many eyewitnesses that jesus is resurrected and jesus after the resurrection was appearing to the people appearing to the i mean uh, to the to the to the disciples of jesus christ in different places in different places, I mean, in one place we understand the people, the disciples were sitting inside and Jesus went inside and showed that I am resurrected. 
then I mean Thomas was saying that okay, no, no, I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that you are resurrected. Then Jesus saw his hands and said, Okay, see this. See this. You why you are not believing in me that I am resurrected. But Jesus said, I am resurrected. You have to believe this, and this is the proof. Man, so there are many people, those who are eyewitnesses, even, you know, the, not only the people, those who were, I mean, uh, eyewitnessing uh, the same time of uh, Jesus' resurrection, but we all are the eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? You and me are the eyewitnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How can we say that? We are the eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ that we are experiencing the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our life. When, uh, I mean, uh, Brother Satik was leading that, uh, I mean, worship, he was saying that we have the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our life. So we are experiencing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and also of the resurrection Jesus Christ in our life. That's the reason that we are surviving all these problems. Right? We have many problems, we have many difficult situations and troubles in this world, but we are facing all these challenges and we are facing, I mean, we are trying to overcome all these problems of this world by understanding one thing, that Jesus is resurrected. Jesus is resurrected. And also, the third thing is, there are, I mean, this is proved by the transformed lives of the people. This is proved by the transformed life of the people. Means in uh, Acts chapter 26 verse 11. Uh, can you read that verse maybe? Acts chapter 26 verse 11. Yeah. Um... Okay, so it says that you know, Apostle Paul was experiencing the presence of God and the resurrected Jesus Christ. And we understand that through that, through that, his life was changed. Right? The life of Apostle Paul was changed only because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the encounter with Jesus Christ. Okay, the encounter with Jesus Christ made his life changed. And also we understand there are many I mean, life-changing people and attitude-changing people. You know, the, the disciples of Jesus Christ once, before the, before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, even during the time of the death of Jesus, we understand they were so fearful, right? The disciples were so fearful. The, especially, you know, think about Peter or somebody, you know, Peter was not able to reach to that place when, I mean, Jesus was arrested. Right? You know, they were they were afraid of many things and they were afraid of the Jewish people and they were saying, No, no, we are not able to go for preaching the gospel to, to uh, and spreading the gospel to different places. But after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, after they are received, uh, they have received the power of the Holy Spirit, and after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus was appearing to those people and encouraging them that you have to witness me that I am resurrected. So there are many people, those lives are transformed. You and me, you and me are transformed. Hallelujah. By the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we have the transformation in our life and our attitude is changed and our fear is gone and we are free and we are worshipping God and we are spreading gospel into many places with that power, with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Remember this morning, you have the power. You have the presence of God. You have the power and the presence of the resurrected Jesus Christ. And you understand that you are the transformed person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The transformation which happened in everyone's life will change your life, will change your attitude. Amen. So, you know, sometimes I was thinking, sometimes we are fearful about many things. And we are not able to share the gospel to other people. We have many friends, we have many neighbors, and we have many friends, and all those people are staying nearby. But we are not ready to share the gospel to those people. But I don't know how many of you are trying, and how many of you are getting ready for sharing the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to your friends and to your neighbors. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. This morning, the Spirit of the Lord is encouraging me and saying that you and me are the people of God and we are the transformed people. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I mean, most of the people are thinking that, okay, we are just a Christian. I am a, I'm a Christian. I am a, I'm a believer. And that's enough. But that is not enough. That is not enough. Hallelujah. And Bible says that if you are a changed person, if you are a transformed person, and God is given the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ upon you, and you are supposed to witness Jesus Christ in different places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of you are thinking about that. I mean, how many of you are thinking about, I mean, I am a transformed person and my attitude is changed and my life is changed. Once I was in a darkness, and once we were in a darkness, once we were not understanding the spiritual meaning of the Bible, but today we know the spiritual meaning of the Bible and we are supposed to propagate the gospel to the people of God. That's the reason I can say that it is proved by the transformed lives of the people. There are many people. One example is Apostle Paul. And also the next thing is supported by the fulfilled prophecies. Read that verse maybe. Supported by the fulfillment of the prophecies. Yeah. Amen. That means already the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the suffering, death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was prophesied by Moses and the other prophets. Especially read the book of Isaiah. Everywhere it is very clearly written that Jesus will born and the suffering will happen and the death will happen and Jesus will Resurrect. Hallelujah. So this morning also we understand and we are experiencing that the Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected. Okay? Not only because of these points, not only because of these reasons, but personally we understand and we believe strongly that Jesus is resurrected. Hallelujah. So this morning, that is the power. And that is the resurrection power that we could experience uh, in our life. And we are, um, we are going to, I mean, just we will move on. And when we come back to the Gospels, okay, when we come back to the Gospel, even I found in the, in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, the Gospels almost change, I mean, seven challenges or, 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 or seven obstacles that Jesus could break through his resurrection. You know, there are many things, almost seven are there. You know, okay. So, you know, the challenges and the obstacles that Jesus was facing at the grave, at the grave, at the tomb. We have to understand that. And when we are studying about all those seven things, I would request everyone to sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude and so that you also will face these challenges. When we have the challenges and we have many obstacles in our lives, in our Christian life, and we will be able to focus that and we will be able to I mean, face the challenges in our life and we will be able to overcome the challenges and the obstacles in our lives. When the first thing, the first thing, what is that? The allegations and lies of enemies. Matthew chapter 27 verses 63 and 64. We read that verse. I mean, it is very clearly written that how the Pharisees and the chief priests, I mean, they were saying to Pilate, informing Pilate, I mean, something about Jesus Christ and what he, I mean, said before his uh, death. Okay. Allegations and lies of enemies. Yeah. You know, what is that? The Pharisees and the chief priests, they were saying to the to, to Pilate that, that he, it, it, is, it is very clearly written that they said, Oh, Jesus is a deceiver. They said, Jesus is a deceiver and his disciples may steal his body because already Jesus told to the people that on the third day he is going to, to rise up. Okay? He is going to be risen and he is going to be resurrected from the 
dead. So that's the reason here Pharisees and the chief priests, they are saying to Pilate that already Jesus is a deceiver. You know, think about that obstacle in the, in the life of Jesus and he was facing that, that word. I mean, they say, okay, Jesus is a deceiver. But Jesus had to prove that Jesus is not a deceiver but he is the truth and he is the truth teller and every time when jesus was preaching and he was talking about truth 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 and this is the truth and this is the life and all those things that pre i mean jesus was preaching why jesus was preaching that and in order to show that jesus is going to rise again after the death maybe on the third day I mean, that's the reason that this is the first allegation and, and this is the lie that uh, the enemies were making against uh, I mean, uh, Jesus Christ in that, um, in that I mean, um, um, verse. And secondly, the obstacle of leaders' counsel. The obstacle of leaders' counsel in Matthew chapter 28 verse 11 to 13. Yeah, read that. Okay, what is that? The obstacle of leaders council. The obstacle of leaders council means, you know, the, the leaders were trying to, I mean, I mean, uh, trying to, I mean, make some ideas. And here we read that the religious leaders gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and saying that you have to play a game here. Man, so you have to play a game here. Soldiers, you know, I don't know how much money they, they could have given to the soldiers to say that. I mean, we are saying, oh no, you have to say that. I mean, we, we did not know that, that, that the disciples came and uh, took the body of Jesus Christ. That's it. You have to say. Okay. And it, it, it means, that, no, you know, they may lose their position. They may lo lose their I mean, job or something when they are saying that because that makes sense that these, the, I mean, these the soldiers were sleeping in the night when Jesus' I mean, uh, I mean, body was in the tomb. Okay, so that could happen, but at the same time, these people give a, some, a, a good amount of money to the soldiers and they are saying, you have to say this and this happened in the night and we didn't know that. Okay, so that was the counsel of the leaders and they took a decision uh, as, as an obstacle. And also, thirdly, says that the obstacle of, uh, I mean, sepulcher or the tomb. Okay, the tomb in Matthew chapter 20, uh, uh, 27 verse 59. Matthew chapter 27 verse 59. 2759, yeah. Yeah, read. <clears throat> ah. So that means, yeah, that's enough. So Jesus' body was in, inside the tomb, inside the tomb. Okay, think about what is the situation of, uh, of, the, of the tomb, inside the tomb. It is a fresh, but you know, if 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 a, if a body is uh, buried in a, in a tomb, what could be the the situation of that body? Okay? Being there for three days, being there for three days, you know, the the, the situation of the tomb is, is which is I mean mentioned there is loneliness and darkness and hopeless and no hope. There is no hope. There is no I mean nothing expect uh, to expect. I mean everything is dark. I mean, loneliness, when there is nobody to support him, and there is nobody to help him, and there is nobody to raise him up. I mean, so everything is lost, and the, the darkness is there inside the tomb, but at the same time, on the third day, Jesus got resurrected from the tomb. Whatever the problem, whatever the obstacles that Jesus was facing in his life in the, inside the tomb, he could come over it. And he could, I mean, overcome the, the, the problems of his life inside the tomb. And also, the next obstacle is an obst obstacle of the huge stone. The obstacle of huge stone, that is Matthew chapter 27 verse 60. Matthew chapter 27 verse 60. <clears throat> Hmm. 
Okay, so the, the, the stone, the huge stone is the obstacle. We know that uh, in that particular verses we read that the women uh, were going to see the tomb and uh, on the way, when they say one another, that who shall roll us away the stone? That means who will remove the stone for us from the entrance of the I mean, sepulcher or the tomb? I mean, this question shows that there are many things which is impossible with our strength. When, so the woman were talking, you know, who will remove the stone which is at the entrance of the tomb? This question, when we, when we listen to that question, you will understand that there are many, many things that we cannot do. And there are many things which is impossible with our strength, but the power and the presence and the strength of God, it can make and move the mountains. Hallelujah. Whatever the, I mean, how, how much big the problem is, how much big the stone is, I mean, the power of the resurrection, the power of God can change the stone in front of the, in front of the tomb. That is what we understand. And those people, those women were asking, who will remove the stone for us? I mean, again, the stone at the entrance of the tomb represents the heaviness of our problem. The heaviness of our problem. You know, most of the time uh, we are thinking, okay, I have a problem and I have this issue. When I mean, this is the heaviest problem of this world and the, that person is not having that problem. This person is not having that problem. But Bible very clearly says that when I mean, with the power of God, everything is possible. Hallelujah. Believe that with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, everything is possible. It is true that the, 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 the stone is a huge too. And that the stone is a big, I mean, stone. But God can move the mountains and God can do the miracles for the people of God if you are believing in the Lord and in the, in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the fifth one is the obstacle of unbelief. I told you once, you know, that is that uh, Thomas, you know, Thomas was not able to believe that Jesus is resurrected. You know, Thomas was a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, even today also, we have many believers, those who do not have faith. Like, Vishwasikala namal perim parayim namak endi illa. Vishwasa illa. Like, Vishwasa illa to Vishwasikala namal parayim. Hmm? So, Thomas also was a person like that. Okay? He was called as a believer or a disciple of Jesus Christ, but he was not having the faith in Jesus Christ and faith in the word of Jesus Christ. That Jesus already told them that I am going to be resurrected on the third day. But Thomas was not believing in that. Thomas said, no, I cannot believe that. When Jesus showed his hands and said, I mean, uh, this is what, I, I mean, what happened and I am resurrected. Then he believed in Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are moving to the sixth, uh, I mean, obstacle of Jesus Christ was Matthew 27 verse 66. Matthew chapter 27 verse 66. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, this is the Roman seal, the obstacle of Roman seal. You know, it is not a, it is not easy to come out of the uh, of the tomb if there is a Roman seal on that. Okay, so here it, we read that you know that represents the security by Roman government and the religion. The Roman government and the religion were having that seal, and it it, it was so important, and it was a powerful I mean seal on the on the tomb on the on the tomb, and we understand that the angel is sitting on the stone. Remember, okay. So this is very interesting to understand. You know, we know that the stone is a huge stone. And there is nobody to remove the stone. And there is nobody to help, uh, I mean, Jesus there. And there is nobody to help the woman there. But at the same time, when, when the woman were reaching there, they saw that the stone is removed already. And the angel is sitting on the, sitting on the stone. Sitting on the stone this morning. Let me let me tell you one thing. Hallelujah. The, 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 the problems that you are seeing in your life and the problem that you are facing in your Christian life. I mean, if, if God's presence is there, I mean, everything will be removed. An angel of God is standing or sitting 
on the stone on the stone hallelujah this morning i mean the bible says that i mean every problem that we are facing i mean we have a solution for that we have a solution for that even before you the angel of god is going there and he is removing the i mean the stone and saying that it is already removed i'm standing or i'm sitting on the tomb i'm sitting on the stone hallelujah this morning i mean the bible very clearly says that I mean, our god is able to i mean defeat the problems of the christian people hallelujah and again 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 you know the last one the the seventh one the seventh i mean obstacle is the guard in front of the tomb matthew chapter 27 verse 65 that means the government already appointed some of the guard there in front of the tomb for the security for the security otherwise they were knowing that some disciples or somebody will come there and take the body away so that's the reason the guard was there and that was an obstacle for Jesus to come out but we understand the angel of the Lord is sitting on the stone and he removed it and that shows that hallelujah and we are standing on the on the on the promises of God hallelujah so this morning let me tell you one thing that if you have a promise of God that God's presence is with you then why we are worried about many other things hallelujah Close your eyes in the presence of God and just think about I mean, what are the obstacles that uh, Jesus was I mean, facing at the tomb of uh, I mean, his, his grave. The allegations and the lies of enemies, I mean, the, the, the leader's counsel, the tomb, I mean, the obstacle of huge stone, the, the obstacle of unbelief and also the Roman seal and the guard in front of the tomb. Hallelujah. But the Bible very clearly says that. When the angel of the Lord is coming there, when the presence of God is there, when the resurrection power of Jesus is there, nobody can block the power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even today also, we understand that we are going through different situations, different problems in our lives. When you are going through that different pro problem, sometimes we are looking into the stone. We are looking into the problem and saying, oh, this problem is the biggest problem for me. And that person is not having that problem. This person is not having that problem. Oh, Lord, why I am alone facing this problem? Why I am alone going through this difficult situation? But the Bible very clearly says that when you believe in the promises of God, when you are standing on the promises of God, hallelujah, that promises of God, that power of God, that presence of God, and that power of the resurrection, Jesus Christ, will raise you up from the problems. Hallelujah. The, the difficult situation that we are going through. Hallelujah. The stone in front of a tomb. And we are saying that okay, this is a huge tomb. He, this is a huge stone that in front of my life. And I am not able to overcome that. I am not able to I mean, come over that. But the Bible says that I mean, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This morning I mean, God is doing the miracles in our lives. So let's all submit us to the mighty hand of God. Whatever the problem that we are facing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are the obstacles that we are facing in our life? You may be knowing your obstacles. You may be knowing your problems. I know my problem. You know my, your problem. And you understand that you have the promise of God with you. You have the presence of Jesus, I mean, resurrected Jesus with you. And he says that if I overcome, if I could overcome this problem, I mean, you can also overcome the problems hallelujah and jesus said that okay i mean i'm giving my strength to you i'm giving my presence to you and i'm giving my peace to you and i'm giving the hope of the resurrection to you and this morning we can receive that hope of the resurrection and receive the strength of resurrection and receive the i mean power of the resurrection of jesus christ in our lives also and let us all i mean overcome the challenges and overcome the problems that we are facing in this world hallelujah 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 let's bring out some of the mighty hand of God. Let's pray together. Amen. Hallelujah. As we are gathering together, I would request uh, I mean, Brother I mean, Jovins to lead us in prayer I and mean, meditating the word of God this morning. Hallelujah.